From arrow helmets and skin suits to whiskey flask bottle mounts, there is perhaps no more diverse gravel gear to be found than at the Mid-South here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. The organizers do a fantastic job of welcoming everyone from the competers who are going for the race win at the front of the events to the completers for whom just finishing the distance is the challenge as it has established itself as effectively the, the de facto season opener for the gravel scene. Many bike companies use this event to launch new products. Let's take a walk around the expo here and see what we can find, like Dr. Meg Fisher. How are you? What's new? What's great? Oh, everything's great. <laughs> Stoked to be here. It's a big, big first kind of kickoff of the season. That's excited right. excited to see what you see. Thanks for doing what you're doing. My pleasure. Good to see you. Yeah. Have fun. And with that, let's get into it. Mosaic from my hometown of Boulder, Colorado. has got some hot new stuff. Let's see what Mr. Aaron Barchek's got to say about the hot new new. We brought our GT1 i45. It's a new model for us at Mosaic. That's the GT1 i45. Um, similar to the old GT1, but we have a lack of cables here. As you see, there are no cables anymore. We have full integration in our gravel bike now. Um, still fits a nice big old 45C tire. Um, for this launch, we, we made a really cool artist series paint job we're calling Scale. Uh, so you see there's a little pattern in there. It's essentially a stamping technique that we used uh, analogous colors to achieve a, a pattern-like look. And it's all concealed under a nice glossy clear coat. And uh, if you're crazy enough, like Adam from Alpha Bicycle Studio in Denver here, you are single speeding and you only have one gear, which I think makes shifting really like a bike. simple. Um, or, or, or maybe you have like a few extra gears on the back, like Ross's bike, he's got a SRAM transmission. Can't rip that derailleur off if you try. UDH out there. Um, or if you're old school, like myself, you could even put something called a double chain ring on your bike. And oh, it still exists? It's um, still legal? Yeah, you have to have something called a front derailleur. It's much like a rear derailleur. Um, but it shifts the front. Just out here, no difference. So, lots, wow. of, lots of choices, lots of different setups here at this race today. Dark Nebula paint job on the Allied Echo out of Rogers next to Bentonville, Arkansas. Allies are made in Arkansas. You can check out my video on the factory tour I did with Sam Pickman. Mason's just back from checking out the course. Looks like he found a wee bit of mud out there. You just got so the that still water red mud. Sorry, so you're sticking with the road pedals? Yeah, it's a tough one because I haven't so I've been training on basically this. Ex this is a new bike, but I've been training on this exact setup all setup all winter. Yeah, yeah. So I have like I don't know, four thousand miles in the legs. Yeah. On this bike. Yeah. And I don't really want to switch to mountain bike pedals and have to change my saddle height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right before the race. Yeah. That makes so sense. basically tomorrow I'm going to be playing a 100 mile game of hot lava. I just can't <laughs> can't put a foot down. I put a foot down today. And didn't have her clip back in. So, uh, <laughs> the mud is like cement once it dries. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, good luck with that. Have fun. Thank you. <laughs> That's one place to stash your Dynaplug racer tool. Easy access. With the rock sloth, you know it can only be one man. The man, the myth, the legend. Ryan Standish. Rocking a Scott Attic this year. Scott got added gravel, of course. Looks like Stanish is running the new, relatively new Forge and Bond carbon hoops with some 45 Kinder rubber. Seems like folks are going a little bit wider this year than in years past. Yo, Flamingo, what are you running? I'm running a new check checkpoint. Rainbow checkpoint for Mr. Flamingo. Dig those taillights. Blinky, blinky and a reflector to top it off. Swift Industries out of Seattle. Got all sorts of bags and packs. Frame packs, handlebar packs, hip packs. 
Uh, Mid-South is kind of the season kickoff here in the, uh, the gravel scene down here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's the party is what this one's all about, like really kicking things off, raising the hype. I mean, that's what they do here really well is like the stoke, the fun, and everybody just here having a good time. It's all about the red dirt too. This year, red dirt, not red mud, <laughs> looks like. Um, doesn't even feel like the right race. But uh, yeah, excited, riding the 50 tomorrow and uh, just gonna go out there and have fun and then hang out at the finish line. How bueno? So bueno. Also going with some arrow. And the fatty tires. What are these Rene Hurses? He's like a uh, 48. I'm telling you. Fats in 2024. Oh, come on. Come on, lucky tires. Sticker. How fat you want to go? Skinny. Not so skinny. It's a squid bike, squid cross, which is a handmade aluminum in Sacramento by Ventana. And uh, it's decked out with a bunch of uh, accoutrements from Paul Components, uh, White Industries, and of course, Zip, SRAM, and Time Pedals. What, what is the most notable point about this bicycle, sir? The most normal? Notable. Notable. There ain't nothing normal about it. There's nothing bike. normal about it. nothing normal. Uh, of note, uh, I just built these wheels last week. I've never built wheels before. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> Let's, I think they're going to hold together. Um, but they're, they're Paul Word hubs, fixed gear hubs, lace to zip 404 Firecrest, uh, hookless, tubeless, uh, the whole deal. It's got a... Uh, these, these special edition 303 Firecrest uh, sparkly decals that I found laying around the SRAM office that I just couldn't resist. Um, for some reason, I have a power meter on there. Um, I, I usually race single speed, um, but uh, I got it into my head last year that uh, I, like, I, I wanted to do a fix. I used to be a bike messenger, and I raced professionally for Red Bull as like a fixed gear athlete, which was right around the same time I got into racing gravel and doing ultra distance and so this is kind of like the marriage of my roots and 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 where I've gone with cycling and you know dumb shit on a track bike that's like all I ever want to do and you know this is just the 2024 equivalent of dumb shit on a track bike Excellent. Love having one out there. <laughs> thanks man part of the gravel scene, now officially an iconic part due to the Gravel Hall of Fame. When was this first introduced? What was the thinking behind this when it was created? We wanted to get portraits of the gravel cycling community at events. Uh, the very first place we did it was at Mid-South. The very first year we put it on, uh, we didn't think about the, we wanted just this long red dirt road that Oklahoma's famous for and this event's famous for. So we chose this very narrow, long red dirt road, which wound up being awkward because uh, we didn't it think about, it was a road. <laughs> Cars come and go, so we'd have to keep running out there and moving it out of the way. Riders would be in the background remounting their bikes, which sometimes looks like a dog taking a leak. Uh, people were drinking water bottles. Yeah, we learned a lot, and um, but people loved it, 
and they got a patch if they stopped and they still get a patch if they stop and they get a free photo um, to celebrate a moment. And you know, that very first year, we could see the two leaders coming. I, I don't remember their names, but we could see two leaders coming. And so we're shouting when they're maybe 200, 300 yards out, like, we will be fast, stop. We could hear them, are we stopping? Are we stopping? <laughs> and they were like, came in and boom. I mean, we had them in and out in four seconds, five seconds. And then the next group stopped. That's Those days, right that's there. the spirit of gravel. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> some of that spirit <laughs> is harder to find now at the pointy end of the stick. Yeah. I will admit it. Um, but I always have hope. Will that first rider stop? And I'm hoping tomorrow. I'm hoping that first rider stops. We will be quick. Jorts, it's a thing. Performance, stretchy jeans, cut off into shorts. Why should one wear jorts over the traditional stretchy pants, sir? I mean, it sort of just it depends on your, your state of mind. They're comfortable, and they're super light and stretchy, and sometimes you don't feel like wearing, you know, the Superman outfit, so why not? And you probably feel a lot less silly walking around the expo like I am right now in traditional stretchy pants. You look great, Jordan. Ben. I mean... The... the <laughs> <laughs> you had a you had a George ride. We did. Yes, denim there ride. was like denim ride. Was like how yeah. many hundred people came out for that? I mean, like probably twenty or thirty thousand. At least. Yeah. At yeah. Least. We set a Guinness World Record. That's incredible. You heard the man, or you read the man. And bringing all the religions together. It's moon dust. Hey, when you want to ride? Gravel Venture Fuel Guide is a, is a pocket-sized book into a world of wonderment. Uh, we did our first one in Trinidad, working on number 13 and 14 now. 64-page pocket-sized guidebook. It's got uh, anywhere between 10 and 15 routes in it, curated, different distances, QR codes to take you to the ride with GPS files, and then we put stories that tell you about a place. So you can't just go somewhere and not know about what you're seeing or what you're experiencing. The uh, overview map, this guy, this will be the overview map, we'll show you everything that's in a, a certain destination, and then we'll come back in and break it down even further and do routes of varying distance, and then you go into the route descriptions themselves. Good stuff. <laughs> couple new things. Um, so we got the Grinta bags that we just launched, a handlebar bag and a roll top saddle bag, um, and the chain waxing system that has been super popular with our uh, strip chip. So uh, wax a chain or degrease the chain all in one step. Uh, don't need to use the degreaser in the uh, Walter White home chemistry set. So uh, it's been super popular. We're actually now back in stock too. So uh, roll top bag has uh, two boas. So you've got one that attaches it to the seat post and then one that cinches everything up nice and tight, um, which lets you stuff a bunch of stuff down in there and then keep it all tight so that you're not getting all the flapping and swaying back and forth. Um, and then the handlebar bag, we have some uh, TPU coated straps on the top so that it, they're not going to like loosen up over time and uh, hold everything that you need to. Easy access to all your snacks and repair stuff, whatever you need to carry. That's all, as you were, as you were. <laughs> Gula Composites, uh, really the story is behind the wheel and the spoke right here, which is a Traxley braided carbon spoke. Um, for a smoother ride, as well as, of course, lighter wheels on average about 50 to 100 grams per wheel or 100 or 200 grams, 200 grams per wheel set. Um, and yeah, just a much smoother ride. Um, average. Why, why so? Why is this smoother than a steel spoke? Um, well, the, this being composite um, and Tracksly braided, we have the, the angles of those braids at the precise manner that we want to have that 
that give that smooth ride, as well as the the things that we don't want from flex. Um, so smooth in the right direction is the name of this game. Well, most people know Haro for BMX, and we've been getting a lot of looks here today of surprise. If, if uh, you can believe that about a new gravel bike. So we'll be introducing this as a carbon platform. Uh, it'll come in four spec levels. Um, so starting with our top shelf uh, force level um, with a dropper post, uh, then a rival version that's a two by um, for people that are looking for that option. Uh, then we've got an apex version shown here. And uh, then our starter opening price point is a uh, 11 speed GRX kit. What does a BMX brand bring to gravel that other bikes companies may not? Well, it's really the spirit of BMX. So it's kind of that, you know, uh, idea of doing things differently, um, having fun where you are, um, bringing a little bit of spunk to um, the tricks on the street. So um, just taking a little bit of that zeitgeist from the brand and bringing it over to drop bar bikes. I like that. We have, we have heard a lot of talk about the spirit of gravel. This is the first time I've heard about the spirit of BMX in gravel. So there you have it. Thanks, Megan. Thanks. Before I got the Bluetooth shifting, yep. I had to put a cap on there. That's superconductor. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's superconductor. That's Moku. <laughs> and then you're shifting there on the right, like right. The strap on. Garmin to track me you yeah. know, and call home and well, those guys stu these, these are studded? Oh, you hand got, yeah, studded, I got it. Hand studded. Hand studded. Yeah, custom. Here at district. Okay. Yeah, those are V2 XL, the widest tires made. Custom frame. Custom crank. They had to make it wider. Pretty sweet. Yep. Boom twisted technology tie crank. Yep. E and W engineering. So it's just, you know, non-stop upgrades. Okay. Pretty sweet. So that's it from the expo. Next up, race report, Salsa Warbird, bike tests, which I'm filming right now. Stay tuned. <laughs>